Hey peeps, welcome back to my channel. I am making this video on a Tuesday night. It will go up on Saturday and it's been a long day. But I'm going to talk a little bit about five life lessons that I have learned from the Amazing Race. And they're good ones, I think. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. Hit the bell so you get notified when there are new videos out. And if you would give this video a pause up, you'll make Kaylee happy. Well, you'll really make me happy. And you'll help my channel be more visible. But let's all pretend it'll make Kaylee happy. Because she's already happy. <laughs> Although she looks a little grumpy right now. Okay. Anyway, we will be right back and get started here in just a moment. So I've taken up watching The Amazing Race over the past few weeks. Binge watching The Amazing Race. There are 32 seasons. I'm on season 20. I have kept it on in the background as background noise a lot, which means I'll probably be watching some of the seasons over again because A, I find it absolutely fascinating. And B, there are a number of spots that I missed because I was doing other things at the time and just sort of half listening. Apple is missing his collar. Somebody pulled it off in the house today. So the little panther looks more like a little panther. Uh, anyway, so yes, I've taken up watching The Amazing Race. And I have learned things about human nature that tend to trip people up. And not just on the race, but in life in general. So yeah, number one is that if you are out for a specific goal, if you have a goal in mind that requires intense focus and that has an end point that you need to reach, if you slow down your pace because you're in the lead or ahead and you get a little bit slackerish about it, you're going to end up in last place out on your ass and on the walk of shame home. And I find that all too true in life. If I get ahead on a project and decide I can take it easy, that taking it easy turns into usually suddenly going, oh, now I only have four days to finish. And I took too much time to goof off and got to get in there and work. Um, I don't tend to do this as much anymore. But it still now and then rears its head. And luckily, most of the time, it's on something that doesn't matter quite as much as the actual writing and, and marketing. But yeah, it, it still happens now and then. And I see a lot of people doing that. So, you know, keep your eye on the prize. Keep your eye on the goal. Keep the end in sight. And even if you do need to stop and take a breather, make sure you don't let that breather extend into leaving you in last place. Number two, and this is a big one that I see a lot on there, treat people with respect and you will receive a lot more help than if you were an asshole. Because honestly, there are a lot of assholes on that show. I wonder if they treat their partners, friends, because, okay, for those of you who haven't watched The Amazing Race, it's usually 11 teams of two people each going through this race across the world to try and win a million dollars. They have to do incredible things, sometimes very scary things, sometimes kind of funny things. And each week, one team is eliminated. The team that comes in last place usually gets eliminated. Well, I have noticed that with the teams, which are usually two friends, sisters, sister and a brother, brothers, or a couple, I have noticed that in a disturbing number of cases, among the couples, the guys are kind of assholes, especially in a heteronormative couple. The men sometimes treat their wives or girlfriends like, like dirt and yell at them and scream at them and tell them they're worthless and bitch at them. And I hear them saying, I'm the man. And it's, and it's like, dude, you do not want 
to present that side of yourself to the world. It makes you look like a jerk. If I were your employer and I saw that, I would fire you. Because if you're going to treat your partner whom you should love that way, what are you treating your clients and customers and, you know, just generalized friends like? Now, I know a lot of times in abusive cases, because I was in one, it, that side doesn't present itself to the world. It presents itself at home. But if this is coming out of them in a tense situation like this race, I really question whether that's a safe relationship or not. And also, if you lie and cheat your way to the front, or lie and deceive your way to the front, people aren't going to be cheering you on. I sure am not. You know, even a few couples of one who I've went, oh, I really didn't want them to win because they, they're they kind of jerks. And that isn't going to make any difference to them. But when your friends see you acting like that, do you really want your friends to see you acting like that? I don't know. It just it gives me the creeps sometimes. And on the other hand, I see some couples that are wonderful and that includes friends, and, you know, sibling relationships, and they are really wonderful with each other and win or lose, they're supporting each other. And that's really wonderful to see. Now, number three is if you have something unpleasant to do, shrieking, crying, and kicking isn't going to make it go any faster. Just grit your teeth and get it over with. We all have parts of our lives that we don't want to do. We all have things that we need to get done. It's not fun paying the bills. It's not fun going to the dentist. It's not fun, you know, cleaning the cat box. But just do it. Get it over with. And you can move on to something else. There is one woman on the season I'm watching right now. Every single leg of the race she is crying and whining. I can't do this. I thought it'd be more fun. And it's like, why are you there? You know, this is not something you have to do. So if there's something you really hate to do and you don't have to do, why are you doing it and subjecting everybody around you to bitching? So, you know, and if it's something that you absolutely have to do, well, you can vent afterwards, but just get it done. It's just easier that way. Number four, life sometimes offers you scary opportunities. Don't automatically discount them. You might enjoy them after all. And everything good requires a form of risk. You know, it was a risk for me to, it was a risk for me to quit my job and move into a converted school bus. And it could have turned out horribly, and it didn't. It turned out fine. I was scared, but I did it anyway, because I needed to make a change. And there are things that I've done that I have scared me, and it's like, but I did it, and it was fun. And there are other things that should have scared me, and I did it anyway, and I shouldn't have done it. And granted, I, I survived to tell the tale, but Honestly, there I will I will add a caveat to that that you might want to use a little common sense with things. Now, some of the things on the race that they're asked to do, they would be terrifying to me, but there's part of me that wishes I could do it, you know, and granted with my condition and my health and stuff, there's probably no way I'll ever get to do things like that. Who knows? Maybe a few things I'll be able to. But I look at that and I go, I'm terrified of heights, but I kind of would like to skydive. I don't want to bungee jump. I really don't. But skydiving would be a whole lot of fun, I think, after the initial rush of fear and after the parachute opened so that I knew it was going to be okay. <laughs> um, parasailing. I've got an extreme athlete inside me. I would love to wakeboard. I would love to snowboard. I would love to do things like that. It would be a blast, I think. It would be scary, but it would be fun. So, you know, don't, don't automatically discount something just because it scares you. It might be something you need to do. 
And the last thing is you're never too old to take a chance. Maybe you won't be able to complete the task, but you'll never know unless you try. And you might have some wonderful adventures along the way. I admire the couples on there that who are in their 50s and 60s making their way through and a couple of them have almost won against you know teams who are far younger than they are part of it is brains you know sometimes sometimes age does bring some wisdom with it sometimes it doesn't but sometimes it does and I think that a couple who's been married a long time is probably going to have a calmer interpersonal reaction. So that may be playing into part of it. I see people every day uh, saying things like, well, I'm too old to do this or that. I'm too old to dye my hair fuchsia, you know, garnet. I'm too old to get a tattoo. I'm too old to climb a mountain. I'm too old to I'm too old to make changes. I'm so sorry about the blurriness. Every time she moves in front of me, it kind of, yes, it does. Every time you do that, it kind of makes the camera go a little blurry. But we have a fix now, so just park yourself. She's a good girl. She was not feeling good last weekend, and we were kind of worried, but she's doing okay now. She had a kitty cold, I think, but it seems to have cleared up, and that's a good thing. Anyway, age is not that much of a deter deterrent unless you let it be. Now, physically, age will change your body. I mean, there's no denying it, but there are very healthy and fit 60 and 70-year-olds, and it, you know, it's amazing what we can do now. I'm 60, and I still do things that people think, you know, are for kids. But, uh, yeah, those are the life lessons, you know. Don't be an asshole. Keep your focus. If it's unpleasant, just get it over with. Don't just automatically turn down an opportunity because it scares you, and you're not too old to take a chance. My takeaway from The Amazing Race and I'm probably going to go back and watch the next episode now because it's late and I'm tired. Uh, Harvest Web is out for pre-order. Bale of Stars is up for pre-order. Witching Fire is up for pre-order. And Well of Secrets, the last, absolute last, Chen Chen China novella. I have moved the pre-order date back so it will come out on May 11th instead of in June. And it's now $2.99 because it is a novella and not a full-length novel. And for those asking about paperback of it, I have not yet decided whether I will do that. It will cost me extra on the cover. Depending how many people really do seem interested in it, then I will uh, put it in paperback if that seems to be the case. I've often ask for people's interest in things before and a lot of people say yes yes I'm interested and then the follow through is very very small and it becomes very costly anyway so you have a wonderful week ahead of you I will talk to you next week and I put up a book trailer I made a book trailer for the wild hunt so I will link that down below it was it went out last week on my channel so you may have seen it but I think it's pretty cool. I will talk to you later. Take care. Bye-bye.